right. So if anybody knows or pays attention, this is the lane that goes back to the uh, back little field. Uh, we're going to check on some corn. Uh, I was out here Sunday. Uh, I don't know what it's done since then. Uh, it has was not tasseled Sunday. Um, but we'll just get in it and uh, see what y'all think. All right, there it is. Uh, still no tassel. I think maybe I see one like right there. Can't really tell. Um, doesn't look wavy at all. We're going to walk in it here in a second. Uh, I guess I just wanted to uh, see. Uh, there's the other corn. And if you see that big long strip down through there, I ran out of seed and I planted the outsides first. And then this extremely tan spot right there. <laughs> that's my beans uh, they don't look the best um, but they're greening up they actually look better than I was than when I was here Sunday so uh, yeah I was standing on the truck bumper to see if I could you know get over top of this stuff but um it all it looks even there's there's no real wave issues or anything like that uh, these are the neighbors beans they're flowering and Pretty sure they're sprayed not too long ago, but I'm sure sprayed before flowers. You can see the weeds starting to wilt. Um, yeah, here's volunteer beans. Those are probably mine from last year. But this is it. Um, we'll get in here. Uh, this will kind of be like one lonely farmer's corn walking through video he did where it's all a bunch of mess. Uh, here's a convenient spot. So, yeah, I've got a spot opened up and some light. I uh, haven't seen any weeds or issues like that. Um, it's surprisingly tall, and I do not see any ears yet or any tassel. Uh, maybe you guys can tell me um, if that's good. Is that bad? I don't know. I've grown plenty of sweet corn, and by the time Silver Queen gets this tall, it for damn sure has tassels. Um... But the leaves, I mean, uh, they look really good. Uh, there's a little, maybe some striping. I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. I think that's just the vein. Uh, but they are as long as my arm. And uh, there is me. Uh, I'm 5'11 and a half. I'm claiming that half because I wish I was six foot. That's my arm all the way up. And that's that's grown probably eight inches since since Sunday. The tassel's in there. This is I can tell this is the tassel leaf. You know, um, it's just they're not open yet. Uh, sp plant spacing sucks. You can obviously see that we had some doubles, maybe a skip. Uh, a lot of these doubles like this. Um, if you just look up through there. What I am happy about and I was worried about was uh, lodging later on in the season. And the reason why I say that is because this corn got nothing but rain for forever after it was planted. And I was worried I wasn't going to get any good tap roots. Uh, but to me, I like to see those brace roots. Um, we're walking in further. Here's a completely random guy. He must have got kicked out in the middle of the row. Now, see, this is the only place where I, I've i got this kind of stuff going on. Um, you know, that's obviously not good. But they're right up against each other. If you look at the base there. Maybe. Focus. Focus. Yeah. Uh, so, but I think that's just the, from, they're robbing each other. You know? I think that's all it is. The corn plants are just robbing each other because most of the time when you see that, uh, it's on a little short guy like this. You can tell that his neighbor is much happier than he is uh, because it's bigger and it's competing. So, I don't know. When, like I said, when I was in here the other day, I didn't see any kind of um, bug pressure. Uh, I mean, there's a little something, but nothing that I would worry about. Again, I only have experience with beans. Um, see, like there's some little bit of stuff like this, but 
I don't see bugs. I don't see aphids. I've ran into problems before with aphids in my sweet corn. Um, I really went through it the other day. Uh, and I'm not really entirely worried about these little tiny spots every, every right once in a while. But god dang, this stuff is tall. Um, uh, it is amazing. And I'd almost be willing to say that it looks like some kind of... Uh, it's not silage corn. The reason why I say it looks like silage corn is because it looks like the corn that I have a neighbor that grows. Oh, here's an ear starting. You can check that out. Maybe. There you go. Yeah, this is difficult right here. Yeah, that's good. And it's an even taller plant. If they're going to get... Well, that ear sets up at my shoulders. But, I guess what I was getting at is... Uh, there's a guy down the road from me that grows silage corn, green chops it, and from the videos that Jacob has uh, posted about his neighbors growing silage corn, to me that's what it looks like. This was a rough's corn, don't remember the number, no idea, it was priced right, and they said that a lot of farmers in my area buy that if they're not on the DeKalb train or Pioneer or whatever the expensive stuff is. So here's another one that is starting to ear I guess uh, they say you only want one ear per plant you know some people say if you can grow two full ears that's great I'll be happy with a full half a ear you know I don't know what the hell I'm doing but uh, yeah before I get lost out in the cornfield I'm really not that far out in it and it's obviously not that big either this is only like two acres but, I mean, progress report says that it's going okay. Still checking for any kind of aphids or... I don't see any problems like that. I don't see any fun, fun, fungus issues or where I would need a fung fungicide. Um, okay, see, this one is... This one is shooting off. There's going to be an ear. And there's going to be an ear. The difference in development sucks because that means the plant's going to be robbing itself and you can see the bulge there but uh again you know if you're not a farmer you're looking at somebody else who is not a farmer i'm a wannabe farmer um i'm learning as i go maybe you'll learn something too maybe you can tell me a thing or two should i be worried i mean am i am, is the only profit i'm gonna make off uh you know, round bale in the stocks because they're giant. I don't know. Probably won't make any money at that either. That's another thing I wanted to ask is uh, what do you guys think, the experienced viewers, what do you think about running this stuff through my baler? Um, chopper will be on the combine, and then obviously I'll probably bush hog it with my six-foot bush hog. I'll have to do that, uh, you know, if I'm going to get this field next year, this property next year, I'll have to do that before I plant beans because there's no way I could plant into corn stock material like this. Um, you know, I just don't want to have that much trash out there per se. So I'm hoping that I could bail it and make a second income off of it. Um, if it would go through a closed throat baler, even if you haven't looked at my baler very closely, it's a closed throat baler. Um... So yeah, let me know in the comments on that. I guess we'll go, uh, I don't know what else there is really to see. Uh, I have made hay. I made hay once. I made 42 bales at a new property. Uh, the landowner is difficult because that's the only people I can seem to find these days. Uh, or ever, I guess. Um, I did uh, retain half of the property on nine mile where you guys have always seen me make hay uh, like i said i made 42 bales a couple weeks ago probably should have made hay this week but I've got equipment of it. i've got to move around also have a newborn still he's doing great his name's caleb um and he hasn't drove mom crazy yet and she's doing a good job too i'm walking downhill here so i didn't walk down here the other day but uh yeah, I guess I'm just going to get to know those people a little better for our videotape over there. Uh, I may go ahead and tape anyways on the next go-around. Um, hey, what, the roads are straight, though. 
It's nice and scratchy. Love it. Probably gonna pop out this bottom. See here, I found one that's a little wider to walk down. Uh, the corn's shorter over here. But this is also a hillside where uh, um, this is kind of the entrance. It gets really compacted. Um, again, seed spacing. I don't know what to do about the planter. I think it's got the wrong size tires on it, and I think that's what's causing me the issues. Um, but again, like I said, I don't know. Still no real tassels. It is significantly shorter in this spot. But no, no weed issues. Spray did a good job. Um, yeah, see, this corn's only as tall as I am, you know. A little taller. I'm trying to get to that six foot. We'll see, though. And I think I figured out, didn't say this when I was cleaning out the planter and getting the fertilizer out of it. Should have videotaped that, too. I think I figured out why I have one row that plants like that. See that, how bad that is? And the other rows plant, you know, mildly better. I have a knocker that is either stuck or missing, and I checked them before I started planting and didn't have a whole lot of issues. Um, you know, lubed everything up good, and it, it did fine. But, uh, yeah, that's another thing that um, I think I've figured out, and I'll have to fix. There's a little caterpillar. That's probably what, uh, oh, maybe that's two caterpillars. Maybe that's a caterpillar with its head eaten off halfway. No idea, but we're going to leave that alone. Um, somebody's probably going to tell me that's corn rootworm or some kind of other invasive something. I don't know, that one's alive, and this one is dead. This this thing's dead, that's alive. That's that's mildly creepy. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what to look for in, in, in corn. You know, like this guy here, he's striped up real bad. I'm pretty sure that's like a nitrogen deficiency or some kind of deficiency, but he's also short, and he's by a big guy that is, you know, here's the top of him, and he's by one that's, that's that tall. So, uh, I guess I'll quit rambling. If the landowner's not out, I'll go look at the beans. But if he is, I don't really want to talk to him. Um, because, if you remember uh, from the last video, uh, maybe the last one, yeah, it was the last one. No, it wasn't the last one. I had my planter hooked, to, yeah, it was the last one. I had my planter hooked to his tractor. Remember I said he wasn't using the detent and blew my hydraulic hoses? Well, on this couple of things and trying to get going, um, we grabbed a cylinder off his planter. He had a hammer there on the tractor. I had wrenches. I didn't have a hammer. And when we threw everything back in the bed of the truck, I got his hammer. No big deal. I'm not trying to steal a man's hammer. Don't really give a crap about a hammer. But he called me and I said, oh, yeah, I think I did see it back there. And I did. Then he texted me today and gave me a date including the year and a time to have his hammer returned no exceptions it's like man come on really i should have texted him i was like you ain't gotta be an ass it's like it's not like i took your damn hammer to the pawn shop uh, all i had to do was remind me you know i work a full-time job i got a brand new baby got other stuff going on different properties I'm trying to get shit moved around i know they're all excuses probably could have took the man's hammer back but you know it, i'm just being honest and saying things slip my mind sometimes i mean i'm sorry it's not back into the neighbor's beans and we'll try see if we can maybe scrape a pole or a hillside or drag the front bumper because i lowered this truck yeah but how have you guys been uh, I notice a lot of new subscribers, and not like a million of them, or maybe it's just you guys. There's been a lot of new views and comments on my older videos, and that's nice to see people going back and checking me out, seeing what I'm about. Um, I'm about trying to farm, and uh, I'm getting really frustrated, to be honest, because I'm not big enough. I work a full-time job. And 
I have a bunch of small properties, three of which hay properties that were given to me that look nice. They're 10 acres of peat, well, seven acre and two tens. I probably won't get to make them this year. Uh, I'm tired of landowners acting like they're paying me. And like, I'm paying these people. If you want me to cut your hay the way you want it done, you can pay me to do it and I'll do it for you, no problem. But if I'm paying you, sorry, I don't, I don't work for you, I work for myself, you know, and Beachmont Super. But, yeah, um, works, my regular work's picking up, that's doing okay. These are the neighbor's beans. I mean, I wish I had, if I had one big field like that that I owned, I'd be set. Um, or a long-term lease, not this year-to-year -year stuff. And I'm sure there's other people out there that have went through the same kind of things. You know, um, the way I look at it is I'm just trying to get my piece of the pie. Uh, I'd like a share, not ask for a big one, you know. Um, you know, it'd be awesome to eventually someday have like a thousand acres or even 500. But I just want enough to sustain my lifestyle, um, which is pretty simple, and take care of my wife and kids and work with my family. Uh, I'm pretty skilled. And I believe, honestly, that if I didn't have a job and was full-time farm, on my time not farming, I could flip cars or work on stuff, you know, on the side, which I did for years before I started farming, that I'm pretty confident I could make up for any lack of income from farming. Uh, but I've made money farming. And that's what everybody says, oh, well, you know, farmers don't make no money, and maybe a lot of them don't. I don't have overhead, and I will use my old equipment as long as I possibly can to not have overhead. I did buy the skid steer because I felt comfortable in doing so. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot about the overhead. I don't have any hired help. Uh, I wouldn't need hired help if I didn't have a full-time job. Um, or newborn, because I don't have my, I don't have my hay raker this year, my wife's taking care of our baby, you know, but, yeah, I guess I'll quit rambling on about that mumbo, and we'll go look at these other fields. Here's the other one, and, uh, I would say that it looks probably up to par, I do see a tassel, I see one tassel, um, it's probably up to par with the other field. Uh, I don't know. I know this outside round didn't get any in-row fertilizer um, because the chain fell off and I drove all the way around it before I realized, uh, oops, the fertilizer's not going on. So I guess we'll get up here and maybe walk in it some. I see some more weeds, but obviously that's right along the road. And hopefully nobody's coming. I don't think they are. get her parked here see I got a lot of corn right there stacked up on top of each other got some stragglers fell out of the pack I guess I uh, wanted to walk in over at this end but there's no good place to park down there I tell you what's funny is uh, I had a company approach me uh, wanting to have me advertise their stop smoking aids if you could believe that of all things. Um, I didn't respond. Uh, I don't need to stop smoking aid. I mean, maybe I do. Uh, I'm addicted to nicotine, but I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I, I vape Views Alto. Uh, they're made by RJ Reynolds. And, well, after about a month of that, um, I could actually smell and taste again, which was amazing. Uh, you talk about having a steak for the first time all over again okay weed pressure isn't bad on in there I got a funny smell when I got out uh, it could have been coming from the house I don't know it smelled like some kind of mildew or fungus I don't know if you would even be able to smell that well this is an outside row but there's two ears uh, I don't know if you would be physically able to smell that or not on uh, in a crop that's gonna have two ears and I'm almost thinking about ear picking some because bandit still has that uh, picker and I've got another guy I met through YouTube and Jacob 
that said he would buy a, a whole truckload of, of uh, let's see, look at that. It's dirt. Oh, I know what this is. That is. So, the landowner, after he fertilized his corn, he had some left over. And he said that he just spread it around the outside of this field. So, I don't know if there was any damage done there. There's deer tracks. That's always nice. That color of the ground looks like it's been wet right here. Um, oh yeah, and here's deer, uh, freaking corn knocked over because of the deer. There's baby corn. Um, yeah, I'd say that one's been down a while with the roots growing over it. Now, if anybody knows, tell me why the corn does this. See how it's got two sets of those? What's the purpose of that? Is that good? Is that bad? Is that because this corn's laid wet? There's more of them over there? Uh... I don't know. Don't know enough about it. Like I said, I might ear pick some of this. Uh, it would probably be this field because it's close to the road where I could keep a truck. Or I don't know. I don't know how much corn it's going to take to make uh, a whole truckload. Okay, see here now we got roads going the other way. Who the hell planted this? Jeez Louise. Oh, okay. There we've got gnats. God almighty, I ran into a gnat patch. Um, yeah. I don't know. The corn looks... I mean, I guess it looks just as good in this field as the other. I'm walking down the outside row. Uh, could cut over and go into the middle of it. Try to find a wide row for my fat butt to walk through. Yeah, anything you guys know or, or want to point out that I did right or wrong or encouragement or discouragement, have at it because I'm learning and sometimes it takes being called a dumbass to learn something and sometimes it takes a little of encouragement to keep going. I don't know. See, I am seeing a little bit more bug pressure in here. Uh, yeah, oh, I know what we can do. We can walk right to the end of this field, to the end of it, and look at the beans. Of course, now I've got myself in a cross section where, uh, yeah, and see, this one isn't putting on ears yet. Is that from uneven emergence, I would say? Is that why I've got some of them? They're like a few days behind each other or in front of each other, whichever way you want to look at it. It doesn't help when I break them off. I don't think I did. Oh, here's some more stuff here. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Um, yeah, I guess a picker would grab that. Because believe it or not, when you lay corn down like that, it's still put on an ear. I had, uh, if anybody knows anything about Silver Queen, I'll have to insert some pictures right here. Of, uh, Silver Queen. Well, I grew some Silver Queen one year. And it was probably this tall, maybe not quite as tall, but uh, it fell over. Had a terrible windstorm. Silver Queen grows really tall. It fell over, and uh, we still went out there. Obviously, it really wasn't that good to eat anymore after that. But we still went out there and picked all we could for the uh, for the chickens. And I ground up the stalks and stuff like that with a wood chipper, used it for bedding for the chickens. Oh, here's that one row that likes to layer on real thick. And yeah, so it'll still produce like that. Maybe you'd be able to pick that up with a with a, a, a picker, corn picker. Um, maybe not. Maybe this video is just a bunch of me rambling. I don't know. I've been uh under some stress, I guess. Oh, this is a nice wide path for deer. Surprised I don't see more tracks. They probably can't get into it. But, hey, what do you do? Totally could have had an extra row here, through here. Um, but, oh well, uh, what happened was, when I was planting this field, I 
planted all the way around it. And what I should have done is followed the road back towards this fence that we're walking to. And I didn't. I planted, uh, I started going towards from the road and then for some reason I switched and started planting from the fence. So we've already walked past the spot, but there is one spot where it is a wicked triangle that I had, I planted and uh, it is what it is, but God almighty, I didn't realize it was this long. Lost out in a two acre cornfield, could you believe it? They found me 10 days later, dead and dried up. Yeah, I probably should have walked back to an end row before on this. But I'm getting to see the sights, right? Don't see a bunch of issues in the middle of the field. Oh, I bet we're getting wet feet. Not me personally, but I bet we're getting towards where it laid wet. Switching directions because I saw an end rail. Yeah, there is uh, this end of the field lays a little wet. Well, made it to the fence row. Now we just got to make it the rest of the way to the fence. And there they are. Totally kidding. There they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is what it is. I mean, they're there. I'm definitely going to have a crop off of it. You see, I had some wet spots. I'm uh, standing in a sticker bush right now. That was great. But, yeah, they're 3.3 maturity. Guarantee you that tall one's a volunteer. Uh, from last year, I actually had a bunch of volunteers still out there from last year. Mainly through this wet spot or someplace where I had to stop the machine. Because um, if anybody knows... You, if you don't keep a combine loaded, uh, it doesn't do a good job. Um, meaning like it, it needs a certain amount of material in it to thresh. But the herbicide's doing good. And believe it or not, this was a green sheet I planted into. And I mean a green sheet. Uh, it was dissed early on in the year. I believe caused a bunch of compaction uh, because of the clod size and if you notice there's a giant hill here because the landowner did not lift up my disc uh, when I let him use it to disc this this was back in like April or maybe before that I don't know he wanted to just keep the weeds out of it and I tried to tell him you're just gonna cause compaction doing shit wet like that but it is what it is I mean it's a field of green you see my 30 inch rose that one's real straight right there uh, I really wasn't following the markers on beans. These got planted, I'm not shitting you, at 210,000 of the acre. Uh, and actually now that I think about it, it was 2,000, or 214,000. I ran out of seed twice. I don't know why. Um, I followed every instruction, uh, in the manual, granted the manual is a guide, and Bandit had said that, you know, back then seeds were a lot bigger, and that part makes sense, but I was shooting for a hundred, and got two hundred. So I don't know what the hell happened. Um, I think I was shooting for 120, but regardless, I wanted less than 140, because every year I've planted less and less beans per acre, and had a better yield, a better stand. Um... Again, same thing with corn. You plant too many beans up against each other, they will compete. I planted I planted my very first crop at 180,000 because that's what some old farmer told me. Maybe he was telling me just to watch me struggle or maybe that's generally what he does. But he said he plants Pioneer at 180 uh, an acre. And I was like, okay, let's do that. I put on the fertilizer that the uh, soil sample required, um, planted at 180,000. Uh, beans look great. I mean, they were chest high. Beautiful freaking soybeans. I lost money on that crop. Granted, that year they sold for like $8 a bushel, or I think like seven ninety two or something like that. But, uh, it was despicable. The next year I went down to 160. No, the next year I went to 140, and I've planted 140 ever since. And this year I wanted to do less than that, because last year I had a 53 bushel bean crop with the uh, enlist beans from Stein. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. I mean, this video might be 20 minutes long. I have no idea. But uh, definitely planted too many beans. Um, corn row spacing isn't ideal uh, within the row. I was shooting for six and a half and got more than that. But that's what I was saying. I think the the tires on the on my corn planter, it's supposed to have seven five fifteens and I know it's got fourteens on it and they look bigger than that. They may might be like nine five fourteens. So I don't know what the size difference is. I've tried to do some short research on that, but I'll research it more when I go to put the correct tires on it. Uh, when the time comes, and that'll probably be over the winter or late summer. I feel like it's already late summer. I cannot believe we're halfway through July, but I guess when you get COVID, your dad dies, you have a baby, and all these other things associated with, you know, a middle-aged man's life. I guess I'm middle-aged. I'm 31, for anybody that doesn't know. Um, you know, they say that in your 30s is your prime, and I feel pretty good. Uh, I've still, you know, I lost 30 pounds uh, over the winter, or since winter. I think I was saying in my, one of my last soybean uh, harvesting videos that I was, I dieted some, nothing extreme. Um, I feel good. I just feel like I can't get anything done. And it is what it is, and it's not going to stop me from not getting anything done, right? Because uh, I'm going to keep on trying to get stuff done. But if you enjoyed the video, I appreciate it. I apologize for not posting uh, as much as I did in, uh, last year. Uh, just kind of down. A lot of stuff going on with life. And uh, just a lot of uncertainty because I don't own my own land. And it constantly fluctuates and is very frustrating. But thank you for watching if you watch to the end. Uh, give me a like if you, you know, give a crap. Um... You know, and come on back and see me. I do enjoy the comments, even on the older videos, when someone's going back and checking me out. So, until next time, hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Uh, we'll see you.